Welcome back to the second of two vlogs from Northern Ireland called Part 1, Awakenings. Early encounters that influence change from childhood in County Antrim to living in Kent and Sri Lanka in the 1980s. The excerpt I'm going to read from today is from Chapter 2, Impressionable Years, Curlews. The river was a great attraction, and though officially I learned to swim doing the breaststroke in Port Rush Harbour with an instructor, unofficially it was wild swimming doing the doggy paddle with the dogs and my cousins at four score. It was, after all, the best way to keep clegs, horseflies, at bay. Our older girl cousin did not join us on many of these trips, but years later told us she had the job of keeping a watch on us using binoculars from the second floor. I do hope she was spared the sight of us all skinny dipping by the trees on the river bank. The beautiful R Glenavy River is now overgrown with trees and grassy banks, but you can still see the place where we learned to swim. This part of the river was above a small but beautiful waterfall. It was not just a playground for us children, but originally it was a source of water for the farm. You have to respect the creativity and ingenuity of previous generations who used the head pressure from the waterfall to provide water via a ram and pump to the house before mains water existed. My older cousin William remembers his job was to clear any debris from the ram down by the river if it silted up with weed or pebbles. His father had a signal code to tell him it was working again and return home. It was by opening the bar door, as you can see in the photo, except sometimes he forgot. I continue with the excerpt now. Throughout our time growing up in the holidays at four score, there was the sound of curlews, a background part of the ambience. They were breeding there at that time amongst the damp pasture of tussock grass and compact rush. Curlews have not been seen on this farm for many years, and it is similar across these islands as they have generally not been able to coexist with improved farm pastures and exposure to predators. They prefer the undisturbed Andrean moors and bogs or peatland of the higher grounds to breed. This is a cons conservation conundrum with no easy an answers as the increasing human population demands ever more food. They can be seen overwintering on coastal estuaries and islands. The curlew is one of our most declining breeding bird species, showing a 17% decline in range across mainland Britain over 40 years from 1972 to 2011. Meanwhile, on this side of the pond, the Emerald Isle has seen that declines of 78% in range despite the best of local efforts. Sadly, there's a real danger that this beautiful bird may be lost as a breeding bird. I believe while, while there is a viable population of breeding birds, we should not give up hope or faith. Even if there's not a viable population, the conservation organisations are capable of reintroducing species, but only if the funding and work goes into also creating the habitat for their survival. I really wanted to see a curlew on this trip on the 16th of August 2023, and as I was planning to visit Rathlin Island anyway, that might provide an opportunity. Rathlin Island is six miles north of Barry Castle on the Antrim coast and involves a 30-minute crossing from which seabirds and dolphins can be seen. I've yet to see dolphins, but some people saw them both directions on the journey. Dolphins come closer to the boat, while porpoises stay further away. Enjoy this footage from my co cousin's family further along the coast within days of my visit. On arriving at Rathlin, I went straight to the post office, who now stocked the book, and also visited the old boathouse, which has been modernised as a tourist information centre. A knowledgeable and one of the older family members who has lived there for generations informed me. Well, you will be lucky to see curlews at the moment, as they don't breed on the island, but prefer the turf and or peatlands, which are not part of this habitat. They do, however, overwinter here regarding corn creeks, 
we had four pairs breeding this year. After a pleasant afternoon visiting the East Lighthouse, the closest of the three lighthouses to the ferry, I was scanning the seashore shore and saw a speck on the horizon. I thought, is it? Could it be? Yes, it was a lone curlew, hopefully back from its breeding ground somewhere, early for its internal migration to safe wintering grounds. So let's keep these hopes alive. I hope you have enjoyed the introduction to this book and will be keen to know more details at the end. That's all for now. Remember, the more you're out, the more you see. Goodbye. Thank you.